In this video, I'll show you how to create a classic drag and drop game for kids. You'll learn how to drag and drop, detect proximity, Three. play sounds, and pretty much have the most fun you've ever had in your entire life. Let's get into it. Okay, to achieve this, we'll need three components. One will be the actual puzzle manager, the, the board, if you will. Uh, another will be the puzzle piece, which can sit over here. And then another one will be like the puzzle slot where they actually have to, um, you know, drag the drag the puzzle piece over to uh, to finish the game. So let's make our prefabs. First, we'll make our puzzle piece. So let's call this puzzle piece. Um, and then let's create a script here called puzzle piece. Let's also create a puzzle manager while we're at it. And we'll also create a puzzle sludge. Puzzle sludge. Okay. So for our puzzle piece, let's put on our puzzle piece scripts. Now, what do we actually need on a puzzle piece? Well, we need to be able to actually grab it first. So let's add a way to do that. Add a box collider. And now, depending on what you're aiming this for, probably kids, and it will probably be on an iPhone or something like that. Uh, you want them to be able to grab it without getting annoyed that they're not grabbing it. Just remember that their fingers are not too dexterous yet. So maybe increase the grab area of the box. Um, it'll just make for a better play experience. So we've got that. Let's add a audio source just so that we can play some sounds maybe when we pick it up and drop it. Um, and that might actually be it for now. So let's just create that in our prefabs folder. And then here, this will be our puzzle slutch. And let's actually make this, call this base because I'm actually gonna create a whole bunch of prefab variants for all these different uh, pieces here that will have their own sprites and their own uh, unique sounds and, and such. So on this base, let's add the slutch Let's add an audio source and then let's make that a prefab. So let's go into our scripts. Let's start with a puzzle piece. Let's actually start dragging it around. Okay, so close that up as we don't need it. All right, let's hook into our on mouse down events and we need to do a few things here. So let's create a Boolean to determine if we're dragging or not. Then it would be nice to give the player some feedback that they've actually grabbed it. So let's add a little audio clip. Let's let's grab a reference to our audio source and a reference to uh, um, have a pickup clip and a drop clip. Now, technically you should be using a sound manager and I will leave a link to a video that I did on a sound manager just up there, but this is good just for the sake of the clip. So now that they've pressed their mouse down, let's say dragging equals true. And then let's take our audio source and play one shot and our pickup clip, just like that. So let's just first get that organized. So on our puzzle piece, let's drag in our references. So put in our reference there and I've got some audio here, one for each of the numbers and then a drop and a pickup. So let's put the drop in and the pickup. And if we just simply press play already, we can already hear that it's picking it up. Not really too exciting yet. So now that we're dragging, we need to actually drag it. So let's hook into our update function and we'll say if they're not dragging, uh, just return. We don't want to do anything unless they're dragging. Now we want to set our transform position equal to where the mouse is. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our mouse position by saying camera dot main uh, screen to world point and simply putting in our mouse position. And we only need the vector two of this. It will actually include the Z axis. So I'm just going to cast it directly to vector two. Uh, that way it won't actually pin it at wherever the camera is minus 10 or 
um, and it will be on zero. So transform position equals mouse position. Now this will work, but you'll see it doesn't yield the best results. And I'll show you why. So if I grab it right here, it's going to snap up to my up to my mouse. Okay, and it doesn't look too good. So what we need to do is we need to grab a reference to our offset. And the way we get our offset is when we put our mouse down, we'll say offset equals. And now we actually need this here in two different places. So let's create a function vector to get mouse pause and we'll just return that. And as we're already declaring, that's going to be a vector two. We don't need to cast it. So mouse position, just like that. And our offset will be the mouse position minus our current transform position. And let's just cast that to a vector two to make that work. So there we go. And now when we actually move it, we'll say uh, we're moving it to the mouse position minus our offset that we originally set. And now you'll see it should be nice. Wherever you grab it, it'll stay, stay where it is. Okay. Now, when we actually drop it, so on mouse up, and as we haven't set up our slot right now, uh, regardless of where we drop it, let's just send it back to uh, its original position. So we actually need to grab that, don't we? Let's get another reference to another vector two called original position. And on awake, Let's say original position equals transform position. And then as soon as we let go of our mouse, we'll just say transform position equals original position. And then we'll also say dragging equals false. All right, so now we should just be able to grab it and it will go back to its original position. And we'd also like to play a little sound here, wouldn't we? So source. Play one shot and drop clip. Okay, let's work on the slot a little bit. So let's grab some references. This one will also need a audio source. And I would like to play a sound whenever the player actually completes uh, this puzzle piece. So let's grab a audio clip reference um, and call this the complete clip like that. All right, so let's go back on here. And as I'm going to be creating prefab variants for this, um, I'm going to just in my in my slot, I'll add my reference there and then I'll save my overrides and delete it from the scene. And now I'm going to create prefab variant. And let's call this puzzle slot one. And I'm going to do this all the way to nine as that's how many numbers I've got. So on my puzzle slot one, I'm going to add this here and I'm going to put in, obviously it's already one and then I'm going to do it for the rest of my slots. So here two in my audio source and two there. Okay, that was uh, really confusing me. <laughs> that was hard for me to do for some reason. Um, all right, so we've got uh, puzzle slots and they've all got their own completion sound. And uh, we better actually turn off on awake. So on the puzzle slot base, just change on awake and now that will change for all of your variants, uh, which is the power of variants if you have not been using them. Um, okay, so we want to actually play this clip when we get uh, placed. So let's do, let's make a placed function, which will be called from our actual puzzle piece. And we'll say source, play one shot, and our complete clip, just like that. Let's actually spawn these pieces. So in our puzzle manager, let's create a function called spawn and we need a reference to our puzzle slots. So private list uh, puzzle slot, slot prefabs. 
And we need places to spawn our slots and to spawn our puzzle pieces. So let's create two references to two different transforms. And this will be slot parent and piece parent. And let's just set that up in the editor. I'll make a empty game object, call it puzzle manager. And I'll just zero that out. Then I'll create two, uh, slot, two children, call it slot parents and piece parents. And now I'm just gonna make these kind of like scattered. Um, obviously you could write a little function to do this, but I'm just gonna do it just like that. And then on the piece parents, I'm just gonna I'll just copy them for brevity, just like that. So now on our puzzle manager, let's put on our scripts and then put on our references, slot parent, piece parent. And then to put all these in here, an easy way to do it is to just lock the editor up here. And that way you can click away from it and it will stay there. Let's grab all of our slots and put them in there. And now that I'm thinking about it, we need, um, we need a reference to our puzzle piece prefab too. Puzzle piece. Um, piece prefab. Let's just quickly set that so we don't forget. Make sure we've saved all of our changes and we can delete that now. Puzzle manager, puzzle piece, put in our piece parent. So we've got all of our references there. Now we need to actually spawn them. So just for this, I'll probably just spawn uh, three or four of them. So let's grab random pieces to spawn. So random set, and we'll say uh, um, slot prefabs. Just So a good way to just grab a random selection from a group is say just order by and we'll order by a slot. And then here we'll just say random value. So basically it's gonna be iterating through the list um, and it's just gonna be assigning a random value to them all. And then it's just gonna order the list to those random values. So, um, and then you can just take three like that or however you want to grab um, and then uh, just set it to a list. So this could be uh, this could be based on uh, difficulty level or you know whatever you want to do. So now you've got your random set let's spawn them. So let's iterate for random set dot count and the first thing we need to do is spawn a slot spawn slot equals um, instantiates and we're spawning something from our random set there. And then we're wanting to spawn it on one of our points uh, of the slot parent. So let's say the slot parent dot get child and let's send in I there and then just position. So that's, that's going, it's grabbing the slot parent and then it's going to, it'll be this one first. And then we're just setting it to the position of that, um, that object and then just Good turning our identity, just keep it as it is. Uh, now that we've got our slot there, we want to spawn a puzzle piece. So spawned piece equals instantiate. Um, and basically we're doing pretty much exactly this here. Right? We don't need a random piece because we're spawning our puzzle piece. And instead of the slot parent, we'll use our piece parent. Okay. Now that we've spawned this puzzle piece, we actually need to instantiate it, don't we? We need to we need to tell it that this is the slot that you belong to, and that you need to use the same sprite as the slot, don't we? So how would we do that? An easy way would be to create a public reference to your sprite renderer here, like that, and that's actually all you need to do there. And then in the puzzle piece, we can create a public void initialize function. And this will take in a puzzle slot. So basically it's um, it's brother or sister or whatever you wanna do, the, the slot that it belongs to. And let's create a reference here to our puzzle slot. And we would like to change our sprite render as well. So let's grab that sprite renderer. Okay, so in our init function, let's set our renderer.sprite 
equal to the sludge renderer dot sprite the what the renderer that we just exposed there let's also say sludge equals slut all right so now in our puzzle manager we can say spawned piece dot init and then let's just send in our spawned slut and that should initialize just fine now if we hook into a start function here we can actually call spawn and let's see how that goes we set up all of our references uh i know on our slot base we need to put in a sprite renderer reference don't we ah and i've just realized i put my complete clip for all of my puzzle sluts actually in the audio source um, instead of the complete clip um, puzzle slot uh, but that's fine instead of saying this we can just remove complete clip and then we can say just play because it's already in the source and we can we're, we're not playing anything else we can just play it straight away okay now we should be able to press play and the variable renderer of puzzle piece has not been assigned we can do that renderer puzzle piece let's try that again and there we go so we've got our puzzle pieces and still no functionality between them and also our puzzle pieces are ending up behind so let's actually go into our puzzle piece renderer and just change the order to one and now that should always be in front all right, so last thing we need to do is actually determine if we're dropping it into the slot or coming back here. So let's add that last bit of functionality. So puzzle piece. Okay, on mouse up. So instead of just immediately saying, nope, you've lost, let's say if vector to distance, and we'll say our current transform position. And now that we've got our slot reference, we can say slot transform position. So the distance between those two points is less than, let's say three, they win. So what we want to do is set transform position equals to slot transform position. And then we can say slot dot, uh, what did we call it? We said um, placed so that we can play that the sound. And then we can say, and let's actually say add another variable here called um, placed. And we'll say placed equals true. Then else, so if they did not manage to get it close enough, because it is pretty tricky, let's say transform position is back to the original position and dragging is false. And actually we only want to play this sound if they didn't get it right, because the, the actual like one, two sound will be playing uh, if they do get it right. And now we want placed to override everything. So uh, we don't actually need to set dragging to false here because if we say that we've placed the object, regardless of them clicking, we just want to return. So um, if they're placed return and, or if they're not, if they haven't placed and they're not dragging also return. Okay, and that should actually be it. That should be a full game. Let's try it. How about three? Three. Beautiful. Six. Excellent. Nine. Beautiful. It's too easy for me. So there we go. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, probably a pretty long video actually, but uh, we went through a few things. Uh, hopefully this helped you on your way to making whatever game it is, probably a kitty game. If you liked it or if you learned something, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and I will see you for the next tutorial.